Um, thank you very much to everyone who's joined. Uh, I'm Anna and I'm part of the team here at the Oxford College of Marketing. Um, please just note that the webinar is being recorded. Um, that's so we can send it out to you after the, afterwards and you can watch it back, but we can't see your faces or anything, so that's very private. Um, today, our webinar is on the art of writing a press release and it's hosted by Natalie Trice. Um, Natalie will give us a presentation first and that will last about 40 to 45 minutes and then we'll have some time for questions at the end. Um, again, if you do have any questions, just stick them in the chat or there's a special Q&A function. We'll get to both of those. Um, I think that's everything. So I'll hand over to you now, Natalie, to get us started. Thanks so much, Anna. And thank you for everyone who has joined today. Um, as Anna said, do ask questions as we go along. I have got the, the chat open. So if I can open, if I can ask answer the questions as I go along, then I absolutely will do. Um, so you can see me, I can't see you, but there we go. So who am I? Why am I here today taking up your lunch time? And what qualifies me to help you with the art of writing a press release? Um, so I am Natalie Trice. I live in Devon by the sea. I'm not in my wetsuit today, obviously, but uh, I live by the sea with my teenage sons, my husband and my two dogs. And I do love the cold water. Um, I have worked in PR for over a quarter of a century. So I think I'm getting to 26 years this year. And I try to think how many press releases I've written during my career. Um, and I'm imagining it's probably up into more than the hundreds. Um, so I have written press releases for a very long time. So to give you a short overview of why I'm qualified to sit here talking to you today. Um, I started my PR career after teaching English in Tokyo. Um, I had an art history degree, which is um, not very useful for very much, but um, I fell into PR temping and I fell in love with it. So I have worked um, on pretty much everything from Bretty, Bessie Crocker cakes, men's shirts, um, charities. I then headed up uh, PR for Animal Planet and went on to head up the EMEA PR for Cartoon Network before I had my children. Um, my career since then has taken a slightly strange path, so or not strange, but un unexpected. Um, so I have two sons. One of my sons was born with a condition called hip dysplasia. So while I thought my career path would be very straight, it turned out to be quite wobbly. So um, I ended up setting up a charity for other parents of children with hip dysplasia. Wrote my first book, which is called Cast Life, which I wrote press releases about. Um, wrote my second book, which is called PR School, which kind of feeds into what we're doing today. And wrote a third book called How to Relocate based on my move to Devon. Um, so today I work with the college in Oxford. Um, I lecture and I teach small businesses how to do their own PR, but really at the heart of everything I do is around visibility and empowering people to have the confidence to be seen. Um, so, so that is me and I have written many, many press releases and I like writing press releases. So even now I still, I still write them for clients. I think last week I was writing press releases on um, gamma knife surgery for people who have brain tumours. The week before that it was about trampolines. So it can be very, very varied. But I also like giving people the skills to write press releases for themselves. So I'm sure that there's a, a wide range of um, people watching today who cover all kinds of subjects. Um, and hopefully... The information that I'm going to give you will help you to see how to do a press, how to write a press release when you need a press release. Um, and if there's time, I will talk a little bit about pitching because it kind of encompasses everything. Um, and what I will say is that I find lots of people get quite worried about writing a press release. Um, it can be something that they procrastinate on um and fear so I would say that in my first job my my boss was a great lover of red pens and many 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 of my first press releases I think the first press release I ever wrote about was about boilers for plumbers 
So I really have written about everything. And she she took her red pen to my press releases many, many times. So that's me. That's why I'm here. But we're not talking about me today. We're talking about you and how you can build your confidence and your awareness of press releases and what they are all about. So if there was a face full of screens, I'd get people to hold their hands up. Um, you can put in the chat whether you've written a press release, what you know a press release is. Um, so at the essence of all of this, a press release is quite literally a one page document that announces a newsworthy story about your brand that the media might want to cover. So it provides all the personal information a reporter, an editor, a podcaster, an influencer might need in order for them to decide whether or not it warrants them covering it. So that really is, that's at the heart of, of this presentation. It's that one page, it's that one page story um, some people will call it a media release, some people will call it a press release, some people will call it a news release, but I think um, people watching today who work in the industry, the industry standard it is a press release, but the thing is, it is about news, and I would say as much as you can when you're writing a press release to keep it to one page. That's my, that's my rule of thumb with everything that I do. Um, we'll come on to talk about how you can send it, and I, I will try and cover that time permitting so that you just get the whole context of it so I think hopefully that takes away the myth of what it is it's a one-page document that contains news um, and I certainly um, in my book when I was researching my book and I was asking journalists about whether or not they think there is still a place for press releases um, it's it's quite a conversation within the industry about whether or not they are still needed um, and while some of them a couple of them said they didn't like them essentially a press release is the expected standard. So a journalist, a blogger, um, an influencer, a podcaster, whoever it is, they kind of expect press releases to arrive in their inboxes. That, that's what they expect. That's what they've had for years and years and years. Um, and there is still a place. Now it will work very differently if it's a journalist, if it's a contact that you've never been in touch with before, I think it is really good because it is a kind of icebreaker. Going back to the idea, so long as it is news um, and it's relevant to that person. And then if it's someone that you work with on a regular basis, then it's something to go back to them and continue to nurture a relationship. So I think that if you can get the, write the writing of the press release correct, there is a place for it. So I hope that kind of helps with that idea, because I think sometimes things people think that it's a bit outdated, but it is an industry standard and it is very helpful for clarifying the story and information. OK, so what to write in a press release? Um, during my career, I have yeah, I have written everything from programmes about monkeys, cartoons, cake mixes, hip displays for my son, books fill everything you pretty much written a press release about most things um and as I said I really like writing press releases and I I treat them personally like a bit of a puzzle so as we go through this and I'll explain it's like slotting things together I don't actually know how when people just had typewriters writing a press release when you can't copy and paste and you can't move things around must have been far more challenging and time consuming than it is today. But what do we write? So in a press release, what we're talking about is news. You are delivering a news story within one page to a journalist, to a contact. So I had to think about what are the kinds of things. Um, and again, if you want to use the chat and put anything in here about things that you have written about before, or maybe something that's coming up, then do do that because it's always interesting to see what other people are writing about. But to give, to give you a bit of an idea, so, Things that people will write press releases about that my clients that I work with one to one or when the courses are being taught um, at the college. So things that people write press releases about a book launch. So if anyone writes a book, um, they will write a press release about their book. So I work with a publisher. They're always writing book releases. Um, 
I'm waiting today for a book to arrive by a coach called Amy Porterfield in America. I'm sure that they wrote press releases when that hers was coming out. Um, I've had to write press releases for all of my books. So a book coming out is news. It's definitely news. It's something interesting. It's something noteworthy. There'll be a story to it. So that can be put in a press release. Um, research data or survey results, again, they're always they're hot topics. Um, you need to kind of distill the information and find what is interesting about the research, what is what is newsworthy in that piece of research. And sometimes you kind of have to create a survey that not necessarily is manipulated, but if you want to get good results out of it, that can be used in the media. You really need to think about the questions that you're answering in your, in your survey. So you can get data out of it. That is really impactful. Um, so those are always going to be popular. And if you think about reading, um, I don't know, the Metro or Evening Standard or any of the daily newspapers, quite often they'll have survey results. So a survey showed that 95% of the UK population prefer ready salted crisps to cheese and onion, as said Walker's crisps today. So it, it's that kind of research. Sometimes it will be far more hard hitting, but it is a way of getting news stories out and talking about your brand. Um, I know that or I expect there are people here today who work in the charity sector, uh, maybe the NHS. So fundraising, again, it's a great way to convey information. If you are launching a fundraising campaign, maybe you are um, doing a skydive or you are raising money for a new wing of a hospital or something like that, then you can create a press release at the start of the campaign. Um, and then at the end of the campaign, when you've finished your fundraising and maybe you want to announce how much money you have raised, um, the efforts that went into it and what the money is going to be used for, then a press release is a very good way to convey that information to a journalist. Again, CSR. Um, so if your organisation has a CSR initiative or programme, so for example, when I worked at Cartoon Network, we did a lot of, of great work around the world and our CSR initiatives, whether that was giving um, the entire company two days a year to go and work with a particular organisation or outreach work that we were doing maybe in Africa, there was always something interesting going on that we could then be using with the media. Um, so an event or an opening, again, especially when you think about, um, I think you can think about this in two ways. You, you might have a big event. So the opening of um, the first Gymshark store in, in Regent Street, on Regent Street in London. I think that was in January. So they will have written a press release about that when that happened. Um, but also it can happen on a far more local um, level. So recently I worked with a an agency and one of their clients was opening a new coding school for children and that got a lot of local interest because it was something new it was something different it was something that parents are interested in maybe it kind of means that they don't have to sit by the swimming pool for every single activity but there's something different that they can offer the kids um, so the event press release and we had the mayor coming along was just something a little bit different that we could offer the local press so that's another idea. Crisis management, that's a whole different topic, but you would have to send out a press release or a news release about some kind of crisis management. And these take all kinds of forms. Um, but again, you're going to use the same, pretty much the same format. You're going to write it in the same way. Um, so it is worth just having it on your radar if is, that is something that you cover. Um, slightly more corporate -y, and it will depend on the business, the organisation, but things like sales figures. So last week, I think there were um, big stories on the breakfast news. It was breaking that people like BP and Shell recorded um, ridiculously large profits, um, slightly controversial. And that was actually broken live while they were talking on the sofa. Um, so those kind of figures, that would have been a very well-managed PR campaign and the press release around that would have been very carefully worded. And I imagine there were some late nights the night before to get it all in place for release that day. Um, company profits, that kind of thing. 
other other side of the coin not quite crisis management but again um if sales figures are down or things like um a fall in inflation all those kinds of things that will be conveyed in exactly the same way you will have the same format and journalists will be expecting the same kind of document um also we have things like collaborations and partnerships this can work from a very corporate level um, maybe banks are going to partner with a particular charity or organization but it might be that you are a small business owner um, and you have a celebrity who's going to endorse your product or maybe they're going to be the face of your product it might be an ambassador so there's kind of lots of lots of different things but the, the the strand through all of these things is that that document that one page contains news and that's really at the essence of it and I have a checklist at, at the end of the presentation just so that you mark it off but I think you can keep that in mind um, and I think depending on who's listening today you'll often be in the situation where someone's like oh you can write a press release so maybe it's the marketing team or the sales team um, and Sometimes it'll be very obvious that, yes, this does need a press release, but sometimes also take a step back and just think, is this really news? Is this really something that we want to put out in the public domain because it offers value to the contact and ultimately the reader or the listener or the user of the media outlet that you're sending it to? So there will be other things um, and there may be things that you're thinking of that you've got to write or you've written in the past. Do share those with me, but hopefully that kind of gives you an overview of, of the main things. Also, sorry, I was thinking awards. So awards are quite popular with people and very often if your organisation wins an award, that may warrant a press release. It may be more that it is a press release that is for your um, trade press. So it's more of an industry standard, but just depending. So have that on your radar as well. Have that kind of on your list of things that you can write about when it comes to a press release. Okay. So I'm just going. So writing your press release. Again, any questions, please do put them in the chat box as we go along. I'm more than happy to answer them um, and give you my feedback or advice if it's helpful. So writing your press release. OK, so I've kind of set out here the main elements of the press release um, and there's some other things. I think the first thing that I will just say is that one generally writes a press release in the third person. Um, so you have quotes within the press release, um, but generally that news will be written in the third person. Um, so, for example, um, it wouldn't be today we launch a new program about dogs and cats. It would be today Animal Planet launches a brand new series about the relationship between dogs and cats in a domestic setting. And that's generally the format that journalists will be expecting. Um, so I certainly know that during my time I, I've had and if I've been a manager or someone's boss and repeatedly we've had press releases written in the first person, it's always going to be in the third person so if you can get into that habit from today that's very good practice um, and it's what a journalist will expect and I also think that to make this quite um, hopefully relevant to what you're doing if you can think about the way that you read news or that you hear news it's often delivered in the third person um, so I would encourage you today just to go and have a look in the press and even see if you can spot where a press release has been used to generate a story, because that can actually give you an idea of how you put your news into the right context for news desks, for editors, for, for anyone that's receiving your press release. So that's just a kind of a point that I wanted to make at the beginning. So we're going to look at the fundamentals of how to write the press release. Again, ask any questions as we go along. Um, and the main thing is that journalists get hundreds and hundreds of press releases and emails a day. Um, I actually asked one of my contacts recently, how many emails in your inbox? And it was something, it was something like 23,000. Now, it was... <laughs> As someone who doesn't like more than a page of emails in her inbox, that made me feel, you know, slightly queasy. But she literally has so many emails 
So how are you going to cut through everyone else's emails, maybe the emails from her mum and her sister, as well as a bit of junk? How are you going to do that? So the first thing is when you're writing a press release, really think about your headline. That is going to be very, very key to getting the attention of the reader. That headline will also be the email header that you use in the email that you send out when you pitch to the journalists. So you need to take apart your story. So really look at what is the story. If it's an event, what's interesting about that event? Is it an event to launch something? Is it an event to unveil something? Is there a local celebrity going? Really dig into your story and create a headline that will be, um, that kind of just get their attention. So maybe something that they're not thinking about. Um, when I, so one example, and not to offend anyone, but one example that I had when I applied for the job at Animal Planet, I think over 500 people applied for this particular job. And I actually, one of the reasons I got the job was because the press release I wrote um, for the interview stage was about the bush tucker trade. And my headline for the press release was, shall we eat monkey for dinner, darling? That got me a job. Um, Another headline I wrote later on in my career nearly got me fired because I didn't get it approved by America and they weren't quite so keen on swingers and monkeys. But it kind of shows you that impact. And it's like we talk about making a first impression. What is it in your story that is, is going to give them some intrigue? So you think about your headline, you think about inter interest and impact. That is really, really key to getting your email opened. Um, so think about your headline. Think about the page. So I know that you can't see me, but you can, I can't see you, but you can see me. So I'll kind of think about it like a puzzle and a box. You, you've got your headline on the first, on the first line. Um, these are kind of, this is the way that I write it and quite standard, but I will then often put the date and location. So it might be 25th of, of May, London. It might be Exeter. It might be Tokyo, New York, wherever it is. But you're thinking about that first paragraph. So your first paragraph ultimately has to sum up the entire story. And that itself is quite an art. Um, so whatever the story is, really think about, and I've, I've come onto this when we check, because I don't want to necessarily bog you down with loads of theory, but you're thinking about, I think it's who, where, why, when, how, what. And I'll come on to this again in a minute. But if you're really summarising a story, you've got that first paragraph to think, what is that story? Um, if anyone has a story they're working on at the moment, to use an example, I'm more than happy to do that. But if we were if we were thinking about um, if we were thinking about, say, Nike had a new range of shoes. Okay, so Nike have a new range of shoes coming out with with Tiffany. So it was a collaboration recently. <clears throat> And so a headline may be um, uh, Nike and Tiffany join forces for first ever jewellery athletic brand collaboration. So it would be something much, much smarter than that. But if you think about that's the news. So that's quite an unlikely match. Tiffany being jewellery brand, Nike being sports, bringing the two together. And the first paragraph would literally be Iconic sports and jewellery brand come together to create first ever uh, fashion forward footwear with encrusted diamonds. So that first, that first part, that says what the story is. That's just telling the story. So you've got to think, how can you get your story into one paragraph? You've got them interested because you've hopefully got a strong headline. The next thing is that one paragraph, and that can either be one long sentence or two shorter ones, but you really just have that much because you think that someone's scrolling, and I'm gonna do it because I'll probably lose my presentation, but if someone's scrolling through an email and they capture this headline that puts Nike and Tiffany in the same line, and maybe it's a, um, a fashion editor at Grazia, and they're like, well, that doesn't, seem like anything I've ever seen before and then they start reading the press release that first paragraph really has to capture the essence of the entire story so you've got your you've got your headline you've got your first paragraph your second paragraph broadens the story out 
Now, these are going to vary so much depending on what you're doing. That particular example, it may well be that they talk about um, the blending of Nike's latest trainer technology with the classic Tiffany Pantone colors to create match worthy shoes that look equally good in the office or the dance floor, for example. So they are broadening the story. They're giving the journalist a bit more context into what is happening, who is involved, when it's happening. So they're like, well, am, am I going to actually cover this story? And thinking back to the examples that I gave before, it's just looking at, well, these are all the different elements. This is the different elements of the story. You've, you've got that patchy headline. You've got your first paragraph. And the second one is just broadening and giving it a bit more, um, a bit more context and information. So you then come on to a quote. Now you might have one, you might have two, you might, depending on who it is, you might have three. Um, but again, trying to remember it's just that page, but it'll depend, are you doing something with partners? Um, are there more, is there more than one spokesperson from different organizations? So just really bearing that in mind. So the first quote, if we're using the Tiffany Nike example, may well be from the designer at Tiffany to say that um, after many months of, of collaboration and working on designs together, that they had come up with an idea to put the two brands together as it could have been that COVID sparked interest in more people wearing leisure wear to work. So they're actually giving even more of a layer and even more information and even more of the story this one you will put in first person. So that's where it's different. And I think that for me, um, those quotes will also bring out the passion of the story. So if it's someone's personal story, maybe it's a book that they've bought out and it's based on their own lifetime experiences. It might be the author talking about those things. Those quotes really kind of bring the whole story to life. And that's where you can add in a little bit more, um, make it a little bit more dynamic. You can, um, yeah, bring out some passion and some personality into it. It's even if it's it, it's a bit bland. So maybe it's, a, um, it's the opening of an art gallery and the artist is, is really excited because she's 65 and she has been an artist for all her life. And finally, her lifetime passion has, has come to fruition. And this is a dream come true. And I've actually had a story like that in the past. So that really brings it out. And I think when you're writing your quotes, you will have to have them approved. So if you're, if you're participating today and you work um, in a, you know, very corporate setting, you will have set messaging um, and you'll have less of a creative license if it's for you yourself. This really is a chance to, to, yeah, paint a picture of what's happening and give it a bit more depth. So I really enjoy writing those. You may actually find that, um, especially in corporate settings, you have to draft those comments for someone else. So you need to think about putting yourself in, in their shoes. Um, and there's all kinds of situations where you just need to. The thing is with those, they must be signed off. Those quotes must be approved by the person. Um, and essentially they need to be approved by the person in the context of the whole press release. So it'd be very unusual that if you had the CEO of Nike, that you would just get them to check their quote not in the context of the rest of the release so that's always really important and it's on the checklist that I will give you um, before we finish and then in addition to that you may want a second quote so that could be um, in this in the Tiffany case it could be someone that's worn them it could be an influencer that's been part of the campaign it could be someone from Nike um, it could be the, if it was the artist and the exhibition, it could be the curator, it could be the person who owns the gallery talking about why that particular um, work has been put on display, what inspiration they had. Um, so again, it's another layer to the story and it gives more depth to the journalist to see, well, how could I put this story together in, in, in the magazine? Say it was maybe artist today. How, how would I put this all together? 
And once you've spoke, you've heard from the journal, from the, sorry, from the artist, as well as the curator of the gallery, you could see how that's come together and how it would fit with the audience. So I think you've, you've got quite a big job with a press release because you've got to unpick the story and tell it free of jargon, free of, you know, fluff. It's not Bridget Jones. That, I think that's another thing to remember. You know, we're not fanning around with press releases. That film didn't really help us very much, but um, you, you've got to make it an interesting read. Also, you've got to make it understandable. So I remember at the beginning of my career, I worked in tech. So some of the things that we were, were dealing with were really quite complex and dry. Um, and I was very aware that the journalists probably knew more than me because that was their niche. But you've still got to unpack it and make it interesting and pretty much jargon free. And you've got to do the same thing. So if you think about someone who's maybe working in a medical setting, how do you actually unpack the story and make it readable? Um, because the journalist may come back for more information once they've received it. So the way that I generally will write a press release is, is it something that my 15 year old son would understand? Now he's a bright kid, that's fine, but it, it's kind of saying it's got to be understandable. Um, and, and that kind of gives you a starting point to always think, is this, is this understandable? Is it making sense? Is it free of jargon? Um, and the quotes will bring it to life. So by that point, you've got quite a full page. Um, and then you've kind of got your fourth paragraph, which is a closing paragraph, but also a kind of call to action. So it might be um, in terms of, of the trainer story uh, for images, interviews and sample pairs of the trainers, contacts XYZ at Tiffany Press Office. If it is the opening of a gallery, it may be that if you wanted interviews, images or tickets for the open night to get in touch or to check out the website for examples of the work. So that's kind of how you're, you're closing the press release because you want a call to action. You either want them to come back to you for images, for more information, for interviews, or go and look at the website. So you always need to have something at the bottom. Um, and then just a very kind of layout element of it. So at the bottom, clearly saying ends, and again, red pen first boss, I often had that it wasn't done. Um, so the way that, that I always write it is, is ends, and I'll have that centered as well as the headline being centered. So you can just imagine the layout. And I have got a template that I've included at the bottom, at the end of this so that you can slot it in. Um, then you have, I'm just going to check, I don't, I think there are a couple of questions. Okay, I'm going to come back to the questions in a second. No, I'm going to come to the questions now, and then I'll go on to the bottom of the press release because I think that'll help. Okay, a press release. <laughs> A press release with eight pages. Um, okay. So this, this question actually fits into the bottom of the press release. Um, eight pages isn't going to be the press release. Your press release is going to be the one page. So that will, if you write it succinctly, um, if you write it well, you can fit the actual event in there. And it may be that um, the sponsors are X, Y, Z. It's all eight of them. Now, what you will then do is you will have a lengthy notes to editors. So if you see on my slide, we've got ends and then we've got notes to editors. Notes to editors is that extra information. It's not actually the news. It's information. Um, it's information that is within the within the company, so it's like company background, as this person has said, they've got sponsors with boilerplates, event has got five speakers. Now you can mention the five speakers in, in the body of the press release, that's absolutely fine. Um, and I think that, gosh, looking at, yeah, eight pages. I think there's different things that you could do. You could, you could do a very short bio for each speaker and a company background and then offer in your pitch more detailed information. Um, and someone has come here to talk about images in a press release and I will come onto that. But what I will say is if you can, 
don't send attachments with your press releases. One, firewalls can be hard to get through if you put them through. Lots of journalists are working at home if you're sending them massive files that might not go down very well. What you do in your pitch, and I can go on to talk about this, when you're actually pitching and sending out your press release, you let the journalists know that you have images available or you can have a link within your press release that takes them to a Google Drive um, or we transfer. So I would say no attachments because you're actually going to put the body of your press release in your email. Images, yes, have those. And again, I'm going to come and talk about those because they can be the make or break of getting coverage, um, but don't put them in, in the body of your press release. Um, that that's my that's my take and that's generally the industry standards um so with regards to coats what sort of coats if you're talking about product launch um okay so the quote for a product launch say that it was a brand new sustainable candle that smell of iris and that's that's you know just very low level product um or the manufacturer, it might be tyres, it could be anything at all. What's newsworthy about that product? What's that product doing to solve the pain points of the audience, of the clients? So thinking about that, that was what it bring it to life. So the manufacturer might talk about the fact that this new particular um, candle, hoover, um, vaccine, why why it's going to make a difference what it's going to do is it totally sustainable is the packaging sustainable they're going to give extra information so you've told them what the story is but these quotes actually bring out the extra information um is it that it's all made from recycled glass is it that the um it's been manufactured in England and everyone that is part of the manufacturing is paid the working wage. So it's really thinking about what else can you draw out about the story? What's going to be of interest um, and who you're sending it to? And again, I will I will come back to that. Um, so that's what I would do with that quote is, is really taking out a bit more of the punch. If we're thinking about the, the Tiffany thing, it could be that they talked about that not no, not only did they use the Nike um, swish, but also the end of the trainer laces were encrusted with diamonds, because, I mean, that's the kind of thing they might do. Um, so it's just thinking about what, what extra can you give, what added information can you give in those situations? Um, again, ask me again. OK, so the subject line, I'm reaching out to the journalists. Um, I use the title of the press release. Some people will put press release in the heading, but I, I will use, I always use the heading of my press release. That's what I use. Um, and you've talked here about amending the press release to the local news versus national. And I think that's a really interesting point. I'm just going to have a really quick sip of my coffee because otherwise... I might run out of energy and, and start coughing as well. So when you've got your press release, and I think it comes back to the person that was talking about having all the bios and eight pages, where the magic can really happen is you've got your press release. It's been signed off by everyone, your boss, all the partners. Now, the amendments come in how you pitch it. Your press release essentially can stay the same. So you don't have to rewrite the press release loads of times, but do think about the way that you're pitching the story to the journalists. And in that way, you could amend the um, headline. So if it was, um, let's think, Derby-based company launches first ever fully sustainable candle. That's going to be different headline to the headline you might send to the sustainability press but your press release stays the same. So you can, I can remember days of, of kind of changing a press release five different times for five audiences. You don't have to do that unless it's real protocol within the organization you're working for, but you can really change your um, pitches to match the contacts. And I think it's at that point, I would say to you, don't just blind copy a ton of people onto your email. Don't ever just 
CC everyone because that will get you into all kinds of trouble because GDPR and everyone will see who you've sent it to. In the ideal world, what you want to be doing is really thinking about your target audience, thinking about the journalists that you're contacting, and then writing bespoke pitches for all of them. That can be a lot of work, I know that. And there may be times when you want to use a newswire, press association, all of those kinds of things. But I think that crafting a really great pitch, and again, your pitch doesn't have to be loads and loads of, of, of pages. Journalists have journalists will often make a really snap decision whether or not they're going to cover that story. So your pitch needs to be to the point. And it's kind of reiterating the essence of the press release and the story so that they can decide whether or not they're going to do it. So if you can make it regional, if you can make it local, do that in the pitch. You don't have to rewrite your press release. That That is that is the art of, of doing it smartly. Um, okay, we're across a multi <laughs> okay I love this I love this comment here and I really feel your pain so people when you I think when you come to a situation where someone thinks really passionately okay this is a great story and I know that that can be a difficult situation whether you're in an agency you work in house maybe you're not super senior so you feel um I think there's also yeah you said it here um, really great to use it as your own media maker. So I think these days we have that luxury of being able to create our own stories and put them out there on our um, radars. So in that situation, those head teachers, yeah, that this is a, you know, I think there is a certain element of building relationships and saying it's great. Um, potentially with schools, it could be a local story. So there's always that thing. And I think there's also the job of a PR comms person is, is how you work with those people and say, absolutely, we'll, we'll try. You can always say that you'll try um, and send out an, a, a quick email. And I think this is where it's great when you build up your contacts to say, we'll send it to this person. You might know that it's unlikely it'll get picked up, but I think if you can give them alternatives to say, just make sure that it goes in the newsletter, make sure it goes up on whatever social media they use, make sure that parents are engaging so that it's out there. Um, and I think this is something that <laughs> we has new books. Okay, if you, yeah, I see the thing. So library has new books and I'm trying to think of something smart that you would do here, but did those news books, did those new books come from a fundraising event from parents? Could that make a nice little story for um, the local paper? Could it be that they came in and, and read with the kids? I think, could you tie it into um, World Book Day? So I think there's always that thing of, if they ask you, show willing, and you know as a professional, that's not gonna make the Daily Mail, but it might just be that you know someone somewhere and a quick email, a nice pitch, um, can help you so it might not be that you need a full press release in that situation um, but you can certainly show willing and try to get it out there um, and I know that can be that can be hard so I, I do feel your pain with that one you're welcome can you incorporate two stories in one absolutely okay that's Tori's question um, So Tori, with your question, the way that I would do it, and I'm really thinking off the top of my head with this one, is that I would think that um, as, as you, sorry, my brain is, is whirring, but yes, you could do that. In your first paragraph, um, champagne corks are popping in for Maidenhead firm who not own, as they celebrate, winning firm of the year in their new offices so the office isn't really the win but you are combining it into that thing because moving to a new location isn't necessarily news but if you're moving to a new location and creating 500 new jobs that's going to be news so absolutely you can incorporate two stories and what happens is that when you have your quotes you can put that detail in. So it's almost like the jigsaw of like bringing 
everything into the quote to further expand the story. So yes, you can you can do that. And I think that's always a really clever way of bringing in something that maybe isn't major news, but you have got something else to add to the story. Okay, right, so I'm just going to check the time. It's quarter past, that's okay. Um, and I always think have fun with them because yeah, I am a press release geek. I do like writing them, but if you can try to have a bit of fun with them and just see, well, this is this is what we've got, then that can sometimes make it less uh, intimidating. Okay, right. So check. We've got the how, when, why, where. Have those have those in mind. Um, but I'm going to say just try and make sure that it is newsworthy. Check your story, is it news? That is the main thing. It's really mean, and I'm not a particularly thick skinned person at all, but someone once said to me at the beginning, who cares? And it's that thing, isn't it, of like, okay, you make the call as the PR person, and like someone was saying about the head teachers, they think it's news, um, but really think, okay, if they really think it's news and we've really got to get it out there, how can I create a story out of this? How can I maybe um, jump on something else that's happening? So World Book Day, International Women's Day, Mother's Day, all those kinds of things. Is there a way that you can maybe news jack or use the news angle some way? Or I always have, I essentially have five contacts I know that everyone that I work with they will be interested in. So it, it's kind of that other layer of who are your contacts? Who do you know well? Who are the press that you know if you've got a story, even if it's a hard sell, they will potentially cover it for you. Um, so yeah, who cares is kind of like a bit of a checklist when it comes to your press release. Is it written in the third person? Have your quotes been approved? Um, because that can get you into trouble. I mean, you you have a bit of a back out these days because of online coverage. But once it's in print, if it hasn't been approved, that could then turn into a crisis situation if someone's really not happy. So it is important to get it improved and get it approved in the context of the overall press release. Then when kind of talking about pitching is who is your, who are you sending it to? So as I said, you don't want to send your press release to everybody. Um, you want to think about, right, where do I want this to be seen? And you want the news to be seen by your target audience, your ideal clients, your current clients, maybe past clients that you want to come back or future clients um, or industry peers. So really thinking about, right, what are the what are the media outlets that are going to want to cover this? Um, as I remember speaking to a coach once and she said she wanted to be in GQ she was a coach for women and I was kind of like I can't see the rationale in that so you really want to think about who are you sending this to who's going to get your press release um, and how might they use it um, do you have images so as I've already said you don't really want to um, put images as attachments your press release doesn't go as an attachment it all goes in the body of an email you can send links to Google Drive um, you can offer them though to journalists and maybe if they're really big images sending them a we transfer once they come back to you um, there's a lot of uh, talk and people talking about how to follow up your pitches one way that you can follow them up is just to say would you like images I'm just following this up we've got some great images would this be of interest again don't send them unless they've asked for them um, or unless you know the journalist really well and you know it's a journalist that will always take your images and your stories. Um, but do have images. That is really, really important because it can often make or break whether or not you get the coverage. So have those ready. Um, and at the beginning of any campaign, beginning of working with any client at all, just say to them, have you got images? It's not difficult. I think you can get a decent image, at least online. Um, on a smartphone so just have those also will you be at your desk if they come back to you I mean you don't want to send out a really important press release and then go on holiday for two weeks which sounds ridiculous but it happens or then you know go to lunch because if it's a really important story you want to be around 
So I, I always say that, always just kind of cover these things off. Have you done a spell check? Use Grammarly, use Word, um, get someone else to read it if you can, just for a real kind of sanity check. Um, I'm terrible at checking my own stuff. I'll always get someone. And if, if nothing else, in Word, there's a read function. And that's a really helpful tool to use with the press releases, ideally before you then send to anyone to approve it. I'm just going to have a look at these questions here. I have got a tiny bit more. No, so Tom, no, don't put your images in the press release. I would offer them and send a link to a Google uh, to a Google Drive, but I wouldn't send them, um, especially people like Times, Reach, all that kind of thing. They have firewalls. You might then you might miss the opportunity of actually reaching the journalist. Um, Crystal, fitting it onto one page. So if I just move to the next slide, it's a template. This template will kind of give you that idea. Um, even if you created, I mean, it's really anal, but you created text boxes on a page. And I'm not saying don't go over it, but a journalist isn't going to read any more than a page. They really probably won't read any more than the first paragraph to decide. If you think some of these journalists are probably as old school as me, they know whether it's going to work. So um, and making it really, and again, as I was saying before, try reading the publications you want to be in, because that will give you some, some kind of context and clarity as well. How do they write about these stories? How much, how much information do they cover? They don't need to know everything about the history of Cadbury. They just need to know why, why Mars bars have suddenly got a third smaller. You know, it, it, it's trying to be, You've got to be clever. Um, and I always say it's not rocket science, but there is kind of an art to write, writing a press release. Um, OK, so Kirsty, yes, when you pitch, you've got your heading and then personalising. So that's when I was saying, like, don't see, see everybody in your address book. Don't blind copy if you can um, and then kind of pitch it to them. It's going to depend who you're working for, how much time you've got. But if you can kind of say, you know, I recently saw you writing about the latest innovation in, in trainers. I've got this story from Nike and Tiffany. I wonder if you'd be interested. If you can make it as personalised as possible, or you know that they write about scented candles, or you know that they write about women in tech, do your homework because they're so used to getting spammed um, and blind copied dear editor, all that kind of thing. If you know their name, spell their name right. It's really little things, but they're time poor. Um, they're probably tired. They're on deadlines. Making their lives as easy as possible is always going to be helpful. Um, and yeah, pitching it so that you pitch it to them as, as much as you can. So Sarah's asked, why can't you send images before they ask for them? I, I just personally don't. I just don't send images as attachments. It clogs up email boxes. They have to download them. Um, I've asked journalists before when I've been writing my book, when I've been giving presentations and writing reports and things. And mainly they say, don't send me images until I've asked for them. It gives you a good reason to follow up. And if they really want the story, they will come back and say, have you got images? Um, What's more time or data in a press release? Good question. I wouldn't send it. I, I tend to send them in the mornings. So it depends how hot the news is. If you think about a national daily, earlier in the morning is going to get to them. Um, if it's something that's going out to a monthly magazine, I think it's more bearing in mind those monthly magazines work three, three months in advance. Um, but if it's hot news, get it to them earlier maybe not first thing on a Monday. And I would also say that I'm finding now when I do do consultancy work that a lot of people don't work on a Friday. So choose, I would say Tuesday to Thursday is gonna be a good time. Um, yep. I think lots of nationals kind of have their, their morning meetings about 10. So if we get it to them earlier in the morning, um, but those days, yep, Tom, so, I think I think really keep everything in an email in your initial pitch. You're writing your pitch. 
full press releases below, copy and paste your press release. You're writing it in Word to give you that guide of the page, but try not to send any attachments. Don't send your press releases as PDFs. That is a really big pet hate of journalists. Um, they can't copy and paste it. It's not usable. Again, you, you want to be the PR person who is easy to work with, who is friendly, who is fast, who has all of the information. Body of email, if you think about it, you can copy and paste it. So it's a bit like my son's school. If they send me an attachment, it usually goes into junk. And then if it's a PDF, I have to fiddle around and copy and paste. They just send me everything within the, the, press, the email. I can just deal with it straight away. So that's what I would say. Keep everything in the body of the email. Use images to go back as a follow up if you haven't come if they haven't come back to you and you think it's a story that they really could cover because it's really pertinent to them and then send images. But your images might be so big that you use WeTransfer anyway. Um, yeah, so ends. This is, you're welcome, Tom, that's fine. So this, this kind of template here, and I think Anne will be sending out the presentation anyway, this kind of gives you the format. So if you can imagine, um, if you can imagine this, this slide here, there's lots of kind of text blocks. So at the bottom, I literally have ends. So every press release I write looks like this. I've got my first paragraph, second paragraph, third is quotes, might be one, might be two. And the fourth paragraph is kind of the call to action. More information, check out the website, get in touch. Then you've got your notes to editors and contact details at the bottom. So I'm aware that is a lot of information. I think I might need a nap after this. <laughs> and I know that I've done this for a long time. Um, and are there, I'm more than happy to take any other questions if anyone has any other questions. Um, I really hope that it's helped because I know that I have covered a lot. Um, okay, so Sienna, and I guess we're with new rebranding. Okay, so if it's customers, I wonder if that's more a newsletter. So using something like MailerLite or ConvertKit where you can have your images and all that kind of thing that, and I would, I would tweak the press release for your customers. Um, so think about your press release is going to the media be, or media outlet. So be that a journalist, um, a podcast host, an influencer. Um, but if it's for customers, yeah, you could use mail a light you can get images and they can put videos you can all do all kinds of different things I just doubt that a journalist will have signed up for your newsletter so I think that that's the kind of differentiation uh looking to start doing press releases and wanted a journalist to contact okay so um no no that's okay no question is a daft question I'd rather you left today having me answered your question so you can you can go and do what you need to do um a really great way to find journalists is twitter um so whatever's kind of going on in in the world of twitter at the moment i think that have a think about where do you want to be seen so really think about what are those key media titles where you want to be seen in the press and then go and follow those places on Twitter as a starting point. And then when you follow them, Twitter will throw up more people to follow either because it's similar publications or it's people who write for them. Um, and then do some research online. And then I always say to people, go to Smith's, go to Asda, go to Waitrose where there's loads of magazines and have a look through them. You really get to know them. And also, um, oh, you're welcome. Also at the front of every magazine, I should really have. Okay. Um, you'll find what's called a masthead. So uh, once you get through all of the adverts in a copy of Vogue, you'll have at the front a listing. And it's not going to work today, is it? Um, after the, oh, there we go. So I don't know if you can see that. That's Vogue. That's called the masthead. So inside pretty much every magazine, whether at the, near the front or at the back, it has all of the contacts, editorial, advertising. Sometimes they have um, email addresses. 
if they don't you can google them i mean you can google most stuff so you can find them but just find those places and find those journalists and and that will be really helpful i've just got some more questions here amy okay so links in press releases and i had this with a client last year so i understand this um I don't think there's anything bad about putting a press release, a link in your press release. I think the issue is more when the journalist doesn't include a backlink or you don't have a link and then you can have to deal with that. But you kind of want the journalist to go to your website. So I don't think there's anything against. And it might be that you have a hyperlink. So in that Tiff Tiffany and Nike release, the Tiffany and, and Nike, they would have hyperlinks. I don't think there's a problem with that. I think it's more managing expectations um, when a client a client says, why, why haven't they included the link? And that comes down to the fact that this is PR, not advertising. And that's kind of the prerogative of, of the editor and the sub-editor, because you can put in the link and the sub might take it out before it actually goes to print. Um, so I, I don't think there's anything against it. It's just they might not use it. Um, Jane, you're very welcome. I'm glad that it's helpful. Um, breaking through to editors, Sarah, I think some of this is, is again, looking at the media you want to work with. If you think about, if we think about Vogue, you wouldn't send your press release to the editor of Vogue. He's he's not going to read it, but you, you kind of filter down and think about, well, sometimes the most helpful person on a publication is actually the features assistant because they're really involved in the day-to-day, -day. they can help you. So I think it's all about building relationships, going back and thinking about, even if you have five places, even if you can go off today and think, right, where are those five media outlets I really want to be on a regular basis? It could be Cosmo, Glamour, Refinery29, Stylist and Vogue. It could be Farmers Today, Potato Weekly, Dairy News, The Guardian and Eco Magazine. Just think about those places and really focus on what's most important and then build up those relationships. Um, if you're in London, quite often, I was at an event last year and journalists were still saying they like to meet up with PR people and business owners. So if you feel brave, ask them if they wanna go for a coffee. Um, that's always, a, a, you know, in person. There's some organizations that actually do speed pitching. Um, I think it's Rocks Hill. If you look on the Rocks Hill website, they do speed pitching and it's on Zoom. So you can actually get to speak to the journalists. Um, oh, you're very welcome, Claire. Federica, you're welcome. A gallery. Okay, so again, Ellie, not adding the images, but definitely directing the journalist to the website for the gallery is going to be good. I think for a gallery as well, really using your social media. So Instagram, for example, um, I do some work with a coach in America and we have lots of artists that work with us as well. And they really do use Instagram well to highlight it. And don't forget, Journalists will go and check you out online. So they'll check out your email, they'll check out your website, they'll check out your social media. So it's almost like you need to have that evidence out there as well. It's almost like the social proof that you are who you are doing what you do. Um, they're very resourceful. Um, oh, you're welcome. I'm so <laughs> I'm so glad that it's that it's been helpful. Um, and just the last thing that I would say is. Don't try and write the press release from start to finish. Because it, it's not like I'm old. No, I'm really old. But when I was at school, you used to write your news book. So on Saturday, we went to the library and then we went to the park and fed the ducks. On Sunday, I did this. Don't try and do it in that order. If nothing else, and you've kind of really got brain fog, write your headline and write ends and maybe write, Sarah Smith says Martin adds so at least you've got the start of your press release and then fill it in as you go along and then walk away and get a cup of tea and then come back and have a look at it and read it again because I think it's really hard to just straight write a press release I never do it that way my my brain doesn't work that way and actually I find quite often I'll go for a walk and then come back and it'll fit into place 
so they're, they're really my my takings I think is it newsworthy stand your ground I think be confident as practitioners that you know what you're doing and you know what you're writing work out who to send it to make sure you've got images send everything in the bulk of an email and proofread it um yeah that that's it I'm on Instagram you can yeah I've, I have quite an unusual name so you you can find me if you need if you need to follow up anything um and obviously Anne and the team at, at the college are always there to help you and have fun with it I mean I still love I love writing press releases I'm a press release geek I do it all day every day um but I don't have that many clients so yeah have fun with it and then the other thing I would say is just set yourself up a Google alert. Um, you might be using media monitoring, but if you if you kind of just see whether or not you get mentioned, that's always helpful. So thank you so much for everyone who came and have a lovely afternoon. That was brilliant. Thank you so much, Natalie. Um, and yes, as we said before, we will be sending out the recording and the slides to you later on this week. Um, so if you do uh, think of any other questions um, later on, just uh, get in touch and reply to that email. Um, I'll also put our details in the chat. Um, a lot of you have expressed interest in studying um, a PR course with us. Um, some of you will actually already be enrolled in studying one of those courses. Um, so if you do want to find out more about the PR courses we offer, um, please do get in touch and we'll be happy to help. Um, and then you can <clears throat> find out lots of other interesting PR knowledge like today's webinar. Um, I think that is everything for today. Thank you so much to everyone for joining and a big thank you, of course, to Natalie for that brilliant presentation. That was really useful and informative. Thank you. Thanks ever so much. Have a lovely afternoon, everybody. Thanks for Thanks having everyone. me. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.